Hey, how's it going? It's your boy, Challenger Coach Adam Moriarty. I was here to bring you another video where we go over unpopular strategies or picks that were able to climb to Challenger with ease and teach you how to play it. We will be looking into a pretty well-known player, TF Blade, who has been climbing pretty quickly on the Korean Challenger ladder lately while spearheading a new build path on Jax or for bruisers in general, so let's check it out. As far as I'm aware, the item combo of Trinity Force Black Cleaver has been done before, but it was never a common go-to build every single game and only a select few champions did it. TF Blade would have been one of the first popular players to use this build almost every single game he plays on Jax. The reason it seems weird in that it was considered a new trap to the point that you would probably get flamed in Silic you for it, but I mean, you know what doesn't these days, is that of course this build has two phages, which, you know, gives a loss of value since unique passives do not stack. It's gone to the point where even professional players are now trying out this style of build across other bruiser champions, but why is that? Well, in the worlds of TF Blade, getting the Black Cleaver over an item like Sterox, which is the normal second item for bruisers, has a couple of advantages. The first is that, well, there's a lot of tanky champions at the moment in the meta, and without it, you don't have access to armor pin. Both items do have similar HP, you'll cap out on CDR way faster, allowing you to duel and teamfight easier without being kited, and Sterox has an issue where it's not always going to proc when you need it, while Black Cleaver will always be extremely effective. Not only that, but it does have some bonus synergy with Titanic Hydra, as the AoE cone damage from it will apply Black Cleaver passive stacks. That means that on a champion like Jax, the combo of Titanic Hydra, a Trinity Force, and a Black Cleaver can be really dead. Deadly. As of making this video, TF Blade currently holds around a 65% win rate with Jax at around 200 games, using this champion as his most played to achieve Challenger on the Korean solo queue ladder with his patented Trinity Force Black Cleaver build. This has even sparked pro players like Someday or pros from EU like Odoamne or Whirliv to try this build out in solo queue. TF Blade and others have also begun to experiment with this item setup on other champions which include things like Aurelia, Darius, or Set, or really any other melee champion that has the option to build both Phage items and can replace it with Sterox. Now, this build style is clearly effective, but I wanted to find out for myself just how effective it really is compared to the regular Bruiser style, so here is a side-by-side -side comparison. In terms of stats, Black Cleaver has 50 less HP and 9 less AD than Sterox at level 11, around 18 less AD at level 16, and around 23 less AD at level 18, but Cleaver is 200 gold cheaper. So ignoring the fact that you lose out on a Phage passive, you are trading 50 HP, 9 AD, and the Sterox passive for 200 monies, 20% CDR, and 24% armor shred once it's fully stacked. But Mori, that's a bunch of numbers. That don't mean much to me. Me top laner. Me main top lane so I can hit people over the head with a lamp post like my heroes do. So what does this mean in an actual fight? Give me the important stuff. Alright, alright, I got you. In a burst combo, approximately 3 second window, you will gain approximately 20 damage from getting Black Cleaver over Sterox. In an extended duel, a 7 second window, you'll gain approximately 200 damage over that time period. In terms of defense, Sterox will give you approximately a 900 effective HP advantage if the shield actually procs in a fight and it's used to its maximum potential. The value of getting Leap Strike or Counter Strike back up though from the extra CDR should not be undervalued as well, but I'll let you decide which one you like better. As a disclaimer, all calculations were done assuming Jax was level 13 versus a standard Bruiser's base stat, so versus tanks the percent armor pen can be more valuable. We'll do a quick GPI comparison here to see how TF Blade stacks up against other Bruiser top laners and who better than the physical embodiment of top lane Bruiser's Hushin Shin. The key things to notice here are that TF Blade's kill participation numbers, at least early on, are slightly higher than the King of Top Lane as he's begun to look to roam down to mid lane to set up ganks with his targeted stun more often. TF Blade also has less damage share and damage done in teamfights overall compared to the God of Top Lane as TF Blade you know, he kind of looks to clean up and flank teamfights rather than be the center of attention and get in there. This, of course, helps result in their massive difference in average deaths per game, with Blade having 4 and Shinshin having 7, with both of them split pushing pretty often. TF Blade almost never dies 1v1 compared to the average top laner and has an average gold lead at 15 of around 200, which is pretty good. The only other noteworthy stat is that TF Blade always has consistently high farm thanks to how often he steals neutral camps from either jungler. For itemization, TF Blade currently has two styles. The first one, the one he came into his career chip with, which was his 1v9 split push super farm style, which included going Tiamat, then Trinity Force, then Tier 2 Boots, followed by Cleaver, Titanic Hydra. 
More recently though, he's been going in more teamfight oriented style where he dropped the Tiamat item altogether in favor of going Trinity Force, Black Cleaver, Sterox into GA. I'm guessing this likely happened as an adaptation he's needed to make for his playstyle on the Korean ladder as he might not be as free to hard bully people in lane 1v1 as perma pushing with Tiamat versus that gank heavy Korean jungle style can backfire pretty easily. In both setups though, he will get a wit's end versus AP matchups as well as a QSS when needed. His starting item level 1 is almost always Corrupting Potion. For his runes, he pretty much never changes them. He goes Conqueror with Last Stand and then Inspiration Secondary for free Nikes and Time Warp Tonic for better laning phase. For his skill order, he pretty much always goes WE into Q Max, but he does start E at level 1 in most of his matchups, but not all. In terms of level spikes, Jax's power spikes are around level 1, 3, 6, 11, 13, and 16. TF Blade is extremely good at pushing that level 1 and level 3 power spike though. In particular, he is just so aggressive with that level 1 so that he can set up an all-in kill at 3 or at least make it easier for his jungler to gank for him at level 3. After that, you have the basic power increases from his ultimate, but level 13 is also pretty important to watch out for as his E is finally maxed, making him able to teamfight a lot easier. In terms of item spikes, Trinity Force completion is his biggest spike in the game, and the second you complete it, TF Blade immediately all-ins and then yells enjoy over his solo kill or at Riot Games if it failed, but you know, mostly works out because it's the optimal time to fight for any Jax player. After that, his power curve for items is pretty linear, although the second item is still pretty strong. After that, it's not too impactful, although the GA will make you a lot stronger in teamfights, so keep that in mind. When Jax has Flash and GA up, he is really scary in a teamfight, and without either, you should probably just consider split pushing until you find a flank. For Jax combos, I'ma be honest here, you kinda make it up as you go, but his bread and butter leap strike combo goes something like Q, auto attack, W, E, and then auto attack, E, auto attack. This is gonna be your primary engage tool or trading pattern, everything else that Jack does is pretty much based off of this combo. You either move the order around to fit the situation, like, you know, starting off with auto W and then using Q to stay in range, but the primary principle, no matter what, is you're gonna wanna use your abilities to stay in range, you know, kinda duh, and then also weave an auto attack in between every ability if possible. He does have some other small tricks like prepping his passive on minions as well as his R passive and then all inning for more upfront burst or using his E and then flashing right before the reactivation. He also has a chaos combo where you activate W while mid leap strike to just make it easier to burst someone down. In this section, we will go over how to lane as Jax in a similar way as to how TF Blade does. Step number one, you trade extremely hard at level one, abusing Counter-Strike even in the enemy caster line to take advantage of other melee champions. Step number two, normally opponents feel safe within the minion wave, so make use of that by continuing to trade on them in the wave with things like Leap Strike, Auto E, Auto E, and then walk out as the Counter-Strike gets that juicy extra damage from dodging minion auto attacks, so trades like this, even while on lower HP, can be really effective as long as you leave right after the stun hits. Step number three, based on how successful his trading patterns were early on, he either continues his aggression with a standard Leap Strike combo while paying close attention to the location of the enemy jungler, or if his trade did not work out or it's you know it's a matchup he couldn't trade early into like versus rumble he looks to freeze outside of his tower till around level six so he can look to set up a gang for his jungler step number four at level six we well, you know once you finally hit there is where he looks to try and trade back with his passive even popping his ultimate to win trades harder to pressure lane with the hp advantage he gains step number five he will wait for item power spikes and then re-attempt an all-in if he wins he continues to trade into the person if he loses he will attempt to freeze for as long as he can until item spikes come in jack's laning post level 6 is pretty much just attempting an all-in, confirming if you win or lose, and then you know you can tell him to all-in if you want, and then if you lose the trade, you know you just wait for Trinity Force. Step number 6, he's often going to test out if he wins the trade or not just by walking up and doing auto W E auto W to gauge how impactful it was in terms of his damage output. If he thinks it was good, then he's just gonna leap in on them even if they're under tower. If it was bad, he's just gonna leap onto a minion and walk away. Step number seven, he will also look to roam to mid lane or into the enemy jungle if he crashes a stacked minion wave and cannot punish his opponent in a 1v1, so keep this open as an option. Step number eight, he is particularly good at making TP plays during the laning phase that will lead into a dragon after, and he will often save his TP to counter gank a bot lane play if dragon is still up, as it will give him some value even if he doesn't score any kills. During the mid game, he looks to side lane mostly on the bot side, even without teleport for the majority of the game, while he powers up and farm from taking enemy and allied jungle monsters, including the scuttle crab. He even looks to catch midways if his team isn't going to. He truly looks to gather all resources to himself possible. Pretty much anything he can get, he's looking to farm. 
During this time, he is constantly looking to flank teamfights or TP into them, especially if his flash is up, but he will opt not to attend hard losing fights in favor of getting a tower or, you know, if he's got a bunch of gold on him. When playing this style of Jax though, be careful of getting collapsed on while you're farming the enemy jungle, but even if you do, I don't know, you're Jax, he'll probably get away anyways unless you really messed up and just try and 1v5. He pretty much will split push for the majority of the game, look for 1v1s, whenever he sees the enemy team not able to collapse on him, he'll just hard all in under tower, if he can't do that he's gonna take jungle monsters while he waits for a map play to happen, in which case he'll just flank the fight and clean up. On a final note, he barely shows up to any team fights unless it's over an objective or he can pick up a shutdown slash multi kill, otherwise those Krugs are just too juicy looking for him. Speaking of team fights though, let's quickly go over how to team fight with Jax the TF Blade way. Step number one, you're gonna want to check your resources to see if you have flash up or GA up, but more importantly, if the enemy carries a flash up or not. Step number two, you're going to flank the fight to be as effective as possible. This means pushing out your side lane and actually leaving to help your team for once, or using teleport if the enemy team overextends during a siege slash neutral objective attempt. Step number three, if the enemy carries do not have flash, he will almost immediately all in them during the fight even at the cost of his own flash as he can almost always kill them in a leap strike combo. Step number four, if the enemy carries do have flash, he plays the fight a little slower, looking to stack his passive and conqueror on melee champions until the enemy carries get too close and he can leap strike into them. Note he almost always attempts to reach the back line, but he isn't overly greedy about it when his flash or GA are down. Step number five, he often holds counter strike for as long as he can as he wants it for when he enters the enemy back line. Step number six, he doesn't peel very often unless his AD carry is overly fed, in which case he will just hit the front line for a bit and then go for the enemy back line once he thinks his AD carry is safe from divers. Like always in these videos, I'm gonna do a TLDR at the end, mostly because, well, if I was watching this kind of video, that's what I wanna see, so here it goes. Trinity Force into Black Cleaver is an up and coming item combination for bruisers or fighters that TF Blade has popularized during his climb in the Korean server that has even pros testing out on Jax, but also other champions such as Aurelia. The theory is that you replace Sterox Gauge with Black Cleaver so that you can gain more damage in CDR instead of having a defensive shield that doesn't always proc. In terms of stats or playstyle, to play more like TF Blade, you're gonna want to roam a little bit more to mid lane, you're gonna want to flank team fights. you're gonna want to have an average death rate of around 4 per game, you're gonna have really low solo deaths below 1 per game, and most importantly, you're gonna have your farming score at or above 80 by taking a lot of neutral monsters during the mid game. Itemization will be Tiamat, Trinity Force into Black Cleaver, into Titanic Hydra for that 1v9 split push style, and then also Trinity Force, Cleaver, Sterox, GA for better team fighting. Runes will be Conquer with Inspiration Secondary, level max will be WEQ. Power spikes are 136, 11, 13, and 16. Remember to abuse that level 1 even in a minion wave, and for items, it's mostly just Trinity Force being your largest, followed by Black Cleaver, rest is pretty linear. Your brand butter combo will be a leap strike, auto W, counter strike 1.6, auto attack into E, and then laning phase you'll want to play trades aggressively early levels whenever counter strike is up and then either freeze or beg for ganks or continue to play aggressively if the trades were effective. Rinse repeat on item and level spikes until you naturally win 1v1 because you pick Jack. Mid game you're going to want to take all side lane farm and as many jungle monsters as you can find after you push out including scuttle crab until you hit items or find a team fight to flank. In team fights, you will look to flank the fight with TP or walk down after slaughtering jungle monsters and look to dive the backline instantly if the enemy carries have no flash, or stack your passive up plus conqueror then dive the backline once leap strike range is up while you have counter strike if the enemy team has flash of course. That's it for our video highlighting an unconventional strategy for climbing. Hope you enjoyed the video and if you have any suggestions for a champion or player to be featured on our next one, let me know in the comment section below or if you have any suggestions on how to make the video better. Be sure to check out our other content on this channel as well as at mobileaggs.gg. As always, I'm the Napoleon of League of Legends, Adam Moriarty Isles, may the old and new Soul Q gods be with you.